Okay, so our question for this video is regarding the structural analysis question, which is identifying which all members here are possibly zero force members. Now before we proceed into answering that, I'll first have a brief explanation as to what these zero force members are. So okay, so let me just draw a line here. We have a single joint over here. Single joint over here. So now, a force that goes from this direction towards the joint. Uh, compressive force. Compressive internal force. In order to make this in static equilibrium, I'll need to have a similar yet opposite force. Same yet opposite force from the other direction going towards it. This is in order to ensure that we are in static equilibrium. It needs to be of the same value but opposite value in order for this to be statically equilibrium. And that applies not only for compressive forces but also for tensile forces as well. Because if we have, let's say, let's say our value for this force is 10. Let's say 10 newtons. Internal force that goes that way. But over here, we have much more, uh, there's an unbalance in forces. So this joint, what would happen to this joint is that it, it has a tendency to, to move towards this side. Since, of course, more force is being gravitated to, towards this direction, to whichever force is greater. Okay, so which means, in order, in order for this to be static equilibrium, these needs to be equal to one another. Here is another example. So here we have a joint which is three members connected to it. Unlike the other one, which is just two collinear members connected to a single joint, here we are dealing with three members. Two of them are collinear to one another, and one is non-collinear. Okay. If we have forces that are, let's say, let's say there are compressive internal forces. The, that are acting upon the two co uh, collinear members. Okay? Now this one, if it were just two members, two collinear members, this, this would be considered in static equilibrium. Now what if there was an internal force upon the third non-collinear uh, non member? That would mean that this joint would no longer be static equilibrium because it would gravitate towards this non-collinear member because there's no there's a reactive force that is stopping it uh there should be a reactive force this way which will stop it from from gravitating out but since it's not there in order to make this in static equilibrium this needs to be a zero member zero force member so now that we have that in mind, let's take a look at this problem and let's see which zero force members are here. Okay, so let's take a look at joint G. We're dealing with three members connected to a single joint. Two members are collinear to one another and one is non-collinear. And since we see that there's only one force that's acting downwards over here, we don't have any external forces or loading that is applicable to this joint. So which means immediately that this one is our zero force member. Because if ever we have internal forces here, and also a force here, there's no other force that will keep this joint from going away. So which means if this was a zero force member, this would be in static equilibrium, which is what we want. GF is a zero force member. So let's write that down. So we have our first zero force member, which is GF. Okay. Now, if you can see, this is similar to several joints we have here. Okay. So here we can see three other joints that look the same, right? That look the same. So here we have at joint I. So at joint I, okay. At joint I, we can see there, there's no loading as well over here, right? They all do not have loading. So, 
So accordingly, we, we can say that these are the zero force members. Collinear members, non-collinear member. We can immediately tell that these are, just upon inspection, that these are your zero force members. So now we have, okay? So we have those so far. Now, accordingly, since these are zero force members, okay, we can actually take them off of this figure and then nothing would have changed because it has no internal force to begin with. So let's do that to make this figure even more simpler. Okay, so now we've eliminated those zero force members, those four ones over here. So now we have a more simpler figure to work out with. And then over here, if you look closely, we can apply those same principles yet again at these two joints. So which two joints are they? F and E. So let's draw them over here again. Okay, so now we have these two. And then if you notice, it is exactly the same thing that we've been doing so far, which are two collinears and one non-collinear uh, member. So over here, yet again, we can see that there's no external loading, there's no reactions that are taking place at this two joints. So accordingly, we can already say and by inspection that this is our zero force members, which accordingly is F and I, all right? Now take note, uh, this is not a single member. These are two members, F and I and I to C. Accordingly, similar to that, E to J and J to C. So if F and I are zero force members, okay, if F and I and J and J and E are zero force members, accordingly, its connected member CJ and IC will also be zero force members. Alright? So we actually got four here, okay? We have four to work with. Okay. So now we have this clear, uh, very, very simple compared to what we dealt with at the very beginning. All right. So here, if you notice again, I'm not sure whether it's really that obvious, but we already have our last zero member, which if you can see, or, or not see, but still, I'll still list it down here. We have our joint, yeah, you guessed it, it is H. So now, clearly from this, from what we've been doing so far, we can already tell that our zero force member will of course be, and our last one will be, our member C, H. Our answer of what our final answer would be for the number, the total number of, and what are the zero force members in this problem, are these. And to follow up with the second and third question regarding what force is is going to act upon IC. Since IC, as you can see, is a zero force member, we can tell that at IC, the magnitude of the force will just become zero newtons. And then for the third and last question, it's regarding with Fi. Since we can see here that Fi is also a zero force member, you got the answer, and that is zero newtons. And that will be your final answer.